Okay, welcome back guys. So in this kind of wrap up of this IG or Instagram series, I'm going to go into the following. So this was something that was requested. So I wanted to make sure I did it before I moved on to other uh, topics. So in this video, what we'll do is we left off here where we have our suggested users and then we have this follow button. So right now what happens is we just get back this value from Instagram, not Instagram, but Firebase, which is the user's ID. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ID and then we're going to add the user to um, a list or add us to a list of pending following requests for um, the user that we select. So let's look at Firebase really quick. What we want to do is we want to this is the end goal. We want to create a following request. And in there, this is um, the user uh, that I'm trying to follow. And this is my user ID. So basically this user has a list in this follow request of all the users that have requested to follow. So that's kind of what we want to do from here. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna delete this so that way we can start fresh. So I'm just gonna delete that whole section. But that's what we're gonna want to do. All right, so back in Xcode, um, what we want to do is here is where we're calling, we're printing the selected users. So instead, let's create some type of controller that we can feed this from the view, it can go in and update uh, the database. And that way, once we want to display all the people that want to follow us, we'll be able to, th to do that. So I'm just gonna create a new file. Let me just stop this first. I'm gonna create a new Swift file and we're just going to name it. All right, so here we have this empty class. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, we know we're going to need Firebase. So I'm gonna just go ahead and import Firebase. Um, and just fill this out really fast. A follow request controller. All right, there we go. And what will we need to do? So. The first thing we want to be able to do is request to follow. So let's um, request to a follow user. So request to follow the user. And what we're going to want to pass into this is we're going to want to pass the user that we're requesting. User we want to follow. Of course, yours doesn't have to be this long, but I just want to be very, uh, the user that we want to follow. Uh, and we also will need a reference to the database that we can create here. Maybe we'll need this. So let's just for now, let's just do a string. Okay, so here we have this function. And we're going to be passing in the user string. So what we need to do is first, we need to be able to get um, our information because we want to store that into let current user equal fir off dot off dot current user that UID. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to grab our user ID because we, let's actually do, we could do it if let, we should have a current user if we're logged in. So I'm not going to, to kind of, maybe, yeah, do it. Okay. So we're going to create this current user, which is going to be our user ID. This is how we're going to get our information from the database. So we want to store our information well, into that new list. So here, I want to grab everything that's in here for myself. I think this is this is my user I'm logged in as now. So I wanna grab all this information and then store it for the request. So we have all the data for the view. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's say let my data, 
I want to get my data equal, my data reference equal. Um, now this is where I'll need the database. So let me just go ahead and say DB ref. And it's going to be a Firebase database reference, FIR database reference. All right. Um, DB ref dot um, child path. I need to get from user. I think it's just user, not users. Let's see. Yes, yeah, just user. All right. User. And then my user ID. So another child path of my current user. All right, so this should pull back a reference to the location where all my information is stored. So now what I want to do is I just want to observe from that place. So my database reference dot observe single event. I just want it once a, a value and just a snapshot of my data snapshot. Right. Okay. So now that I have this snapshot, what I want to do is just get the values from the snapshot. So let my data, which is a different, it's not the reference to the database, but it's just, it's going to be the dictionary values for what's in that snapshot. So it's going to be equal to snapshot that value. All right. So now I have all of my information stored in this, my data variable. And what I want to do from there is then just add myself to that user's uh, follow request. So let's create a reference to that place in the database. So we're going to do that with a let uh, users uh, follow request list reference. Very long name. You don't need to do this, but I just want to make this clear so it's not as confusing. And then we're going to say it's going to be part of the DB ref. Again, well, we're going to access the database reference. We're going to have a child. It's going to be called follow request, right? And then under that, we're going to get the user. So a child reference. And this is going to be the user that we're, we're requesting to follow. So I'm just going to say, we are pulling that in here. So user we want to follow. So I'm just going to grab that and I'm just going to pop that there. So now this is going to create the following with the user's ID, a reference for that place. And then all we're going to want to do is just update this. So user ref reference list. Yeah. Okay. Our reference to this place. What we're going to want to do is just, we're going to want to update values. And then we're going to just put my data, right? And I think it's going to ask me to do as any or something like that. So we'll see. Let's see what it's saying as any hashable. All right, that looks good. So we're going to grab all this information. Then we're going to update the value. And then let's print out something just for us to see. User added. And we probably could have did an observe. maybe do an error one. So my data reference dot observe single event and maybe it with a completion block. All right. We could have did this and that way if you have an error, you can handle it, but you guys can go ahead and just do that. I probably, I probably would definitely recommend that. Okay. Now that we have that, Let's see, request pending. Let's say that. So new request pending or sent, right? All right, so let's see if that works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play. Wait, actually, no, I need to actually call that from something. So we've created this but we haven't actually called it from anything. So let's go back to um, our section or su suggested user. So let's go ahead and just add in 
let follower controller equal follow request controller. So let's say follow follower request request controller is equal to the follower request controller. And what we want to do is we want to get the, let's see, instead of this, instead of printing our user ID, what we want to do is just want to say follower request controller dot uh, request to follow user. Our user is going to be our selected user. And then our database reference, which we don't currently have set up. So I'm just going to say Firebase database dot database dot reference. Okay. So hopefully that should work. Is it going to yell at me about that? Doesn't look like it. Okay. So let's try and clean this. And let's go ahead and build. Okay, so there's a slight update. While I was editing the video, I realized that what's going to happen is in Firebase for our request, so we have this user, but then we just have um, my data under here. So if I was to, another user was to come in and try to request to follow the same user, um, this is probably just, well, this will just overwrite. So what we need to do is we need to create another folder underneath here um, with this user ID. So let me go back. And as you see here, what we did is basically we just added the ID to this uh, key here um, to this data. So instead of that, we're not going to do that. And we're just going to, we're not modifying that anymore. So we're just going to say, let that be my data and then our let's see what is this accent no that's not what I meant okay so then in our user path what we're gonna do is we're going to say add on to this um, dot child path and then we're going to put our snapshot key so this is going to be our user ID you can also just say current user since we already have that we can say current user um, I think it's already the user ID yeah okay so let's go ahead and run that and see how that updated our Firebase database so we'll go back in here all right so what we want to happen is when we select to follow we have a new folder that gets populated here and in that folder we have our data. So this is my user ID and this is my information. So we don't want this stuff here. So I'm just going to clear this out. So this way, if another user comes along and wants to follow this user as well, we don't have to worry about the values just continuously overwriting. All right. So this is the actual structure that we're, we're going to want to do. So this user is going to have a bunch of different users that want to follow him and then the next user will have their own. So yeah, I just wanted to add that. So back to the video. Okay, so we still have some work to do with this. Um, one being to if our user's private. So let's handle that in the next video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye.